In this episode of Six Degrees of Separation in Sci-Fi and Fantasy, we connect the 1968 cult classic Barbarella to the 2018 blockbuster Black Panther. Make it so. Based on the comic strip series by Jean-Claude Forrest, Barbarella stars Jane Fonda as the title character Barbarella, who is sent on a mission to find the mad scientist who created a weapon capable of destroying all of humanity, Duran Duran. No, not the 80s new wave group Duran Duran, but the Duran Duran played by the late Milo O'Shea. The English group Duran Duran was actually named after the mad scientist in Barbarella, and they began their music career playing local clubs, and one of them so happened to be named Barbarella's. Barbarella! So, what are some of the things that make Barbarella such a cult classic? Well, it's expression of free love, a blind flying angel, funky costume designs, and its psychedelic 60s-inspired sets. Which brings us to our first degree of separation, Barbarella's production designer, Mario Garbuglia. Credited for numerous production designs in film and TV, Mario is also known for his costume designs in the 1970 Italian film Brancaleone at the Crusades, the sequel to the much more popular L'Armata Brancaleone. Described as a comedy-adventure fantasy, Brancaleone at the Crusades continues the adventures of the title character, Brancaleone da Norcia, played by Vittorio Gassman. In order to succeed in his quest, Brancaleone makes a deal with death, played by the famous Italian actor Gigi Proietti. Gigi Proietti voiced the Italian versions of the 1976 Rocky and Genie in the 1992 animated film Aladdin. Dopo 10.000 anni lì dentro, uno si ritrova col collo tutto incriccato. Brancaleone at the Crusades may not have been as popular as its predecessor, but it does give us our second degree of separation. Brancaleone at the Crusades award-winning hairstylist Juicy Bovino. Through their extensive career, Bovino worked on acclaimed films such as The English Patient and Life is Beautiful. But it was in 1980 when Bovino was the hairdresser for the sci-fi cult classic Flash Gordon. The title character Flash Gordon, played by Sam J. Jones, is an American football hero who saves Earth from being destroyed by the planet Mongo's evil emperor Ming the Merciless. Despite Flash Gordon's low box office turnout, it didn't stop becoming one of the most popular sci-fi classics. In 2012, Flash Gordon was brought back into the public's eye in the hilarious movie Ted. George Lucas loved Flash Gordon as a kid and wanted to make a movie based off of the original comic books, but another filmmaker was optioning the rights to Flash Gordon at the time. So, Lucas turned his attention to writing none other than Star Wars A New Hope. Yahoo! Now on to our third degree of separation, Flash Gordon's executive producer, the late Bernard Williams. After Flash Gordon, Williams produced a number of action films, but it was in 1994 as executive producer and unit production manager Williams unified Trekkies and Trekkers with Star Trek Generations. Star Trek Generations is the first Star Trek movie starring the cast of The Next Generation, and the first made after the passing of Gene Roddenberry, the creator of the Star Trek franchise. Captain Picard, played by Sir Patrick Stewart, with the help of Captain Kirk, played by William Shatner, tries to stop the scientist Soren, who is so obsessed with returning to a space matrix, he is willing to destroy an inhabited planet and all life on it. After Picard's first attempt to stop Soren fails, Picard finds himself in the Matrix where Kirk has been for the last 78 years. The scene in which Picard finds Kirk was filmed on William Shatner's property, and the horse William Shatner rides is his own. It was fun. Our fourth degree of separation is Star Trek Generations assistant director Chris Soldo. 
three years after Star Trek Generations soared onto the big screen, Soldo, as first assistant director, worked on Will Smith's blockbuster Men in Black, co-starring Tommy Lee Jones. Will Smith's character, Jay, partners with Tommy Lee Jones' character, K in a secret agency that monitors and polices extraterrestrials on Earth. Throughout the film, Jay and K did not hesitate in killing and causing harm to others. However, during the filming of Men in Black, each cockroach was counted right after being filmed in order to make sure none were injured or missing. I'm sorry, was that your auntie? Our fifth degree of separation isn't any person, bug, or extraterrestrial from Men in Black, but a location, the Pershing Square Bridge located on 42nd Street in Manhattan, New York. Named after General John J. Pershing, the Pershing Square Bridge was constructed between 1917 and 1919 and designated a New York City landmark in 1980. Now this is the bridge Jay runs across and jumps off of in the beginning of the movie. It's also the bridge Will Smith as Robert Neville is attacked on in the 2007 I Am Legend. So exactly how does the Pershing Square Bridge get us one more degree closer to the blockbuster Black Panther? Well, it's the bridge in the first Avengers movie on which the Avengers take a stand against Thor's adopted brother, Loki. Let's talk about blockbusters. The four Avengers movies grossed to date close to $7,800,000,000 worldwide. So before we get into our sixth and final degree of separation, let's recap. Let's go! The first degree is Mario Garbuglia, the production designer for the 1968 cult classic Barbarella and the 1970 Italian film Brancaleone at the Crusades. The second degree, Brancaleone at the Crusades hairstylist Juicy Bovino, who went on to become the hairdresser for 1980's Flash Gordon. Taking us into the galaxies far, far away is our third degree Flash Gordon's executive producer, Bernard Williams, who was the executive producer and unit production manager for the 1994 Star Trek Generations. The fourth degree Star Trek Generations first assistant director, Chris Soldo, brought other galaxies and their extraterrestrials to Earth as the first assistant director of the 1997 Men in Black. The fifth degree, the Pershing Square Bridge, was the backdrop for the chase scene in Men in Black and the Avengers' last stand to defend the Earth in the 2012 The Avengers. And now, onto our final degree of separation. As you can imagine, there are a number of things that connect the Avengers to Black Panther. Wakanda, Wakanda. This connection is shared by the two creators of both The Avengers and Black Panther, the late Stan Lee and the late Jack Kirby. When it comes to Marvel, most people are familiar with the name Stan Lee. However, in the 60s, it was both Stan Lee and Jack Kirby who forged what is now the foundation of Marvel's billion-dollar franchise, Credited for The Avengers, Captain America, and Spider-Man, among many others, it was in 1966 when they introduced Black Panther in the Fantastic Four comic book number 52. Then, in 1994, Black Panther leaped off the comic book pages and onto the small screen in the Fantastic Four animated series. In the early 90s, Wesley Snipes teamed up with Marvel to adapt Black Panther for the big screen. My plan is that while in Hollywood, I will be approached by an eminent producer. It was Snipes who approached Boys in the Hood filmmaker, the late John Singleton, to develop the story. But because of creative differences between Snipes and Singleton and the struggle to convince potential backers, Black Panther would be a movie based on the comic book and not the socialist revolutionaries. It took over 25 years before Black Panther made it to theaters. In 2016, Chadwick Boseman appeared as T'Challa, Black Panther in Captain America Civil War, and in 2018's Black Panther, which is the fifth highest grossing Marvel movie ever. T'Challa, crowned King of Wakanda after his father's death in Captain America Civil War, must defend his crown and the long-standing traditions of his country with the use of advanced technology developed from vibranium and a loyal and highly skilled army. Wakanda forever! Wakanda forever!
Thanks for joining us for Six Degrees of Separation in Sci-Fi and Fantasy. And don't forget to click on the subscribe button so you can see upcoming episodes as soon as they're posted.